coming, Ragman, Bill coming, Ragman. Yeah. Okay. Bill coming, Ragman, Bill coming, Ragman. Yeah. Okay. Hi and welcome to lesson three of reproduction. Now, as you can see here, we're looking at a male gamete, a sperm <clears throat> that has met with the female egg. And in a moment, I'm sure it will be releasing its nucleus into the female egg. The nuclei will fuse and that will be fertilization. And it will form the zygote, which is what we're looking at here. It's two cells, which will then divide into four cells, and then eight, and then 16. And it does this as it passes down the fallopian tube. As it enters the uterus, it's then more of a ball of cells, like we've got here. And what will happen is that will implant into the blood-thick lining of the uterus wall, where it will then stay and develop into a baby. Did you ever feel so bad And here you are, you're pregnant and straight away your hormones change and there are trace, trace amounts, that means tiny amounts of hormone in your wee and that can be picked up by a dipstick test, like a pregnancy test, such as this one. And the rate of growth continues as 16 cells becomes 32, becomes 64, becomes 128, and so on. In fact, it's exponential. If you continue to grow at that rate till the age of 21, you'd be the size of the moon. Here we see the baby at six weeks. It's called an embryo, actually, up until the age of three months. And you can see how much of that embryo is already developed. It's already looking very much like a baby. Now, the obvious question that a lot of students ask is, what about twins? Well, twins are formed when two eggs are released and fertilized by... So, as, we, as we've said, the mum's blood and baby's blood do not mix. So, if we just draw a diagram here, there's my ovaries, there's my oviducts or floating tube, the muscular uterus is here, the cervix and the vagina is there. And what we've said is that during the month that the blood thick lining builds up on the uterus and then on day 14 of the menstrual cycle, which you'll learn about later, an egg is ovulated and bursts out of the ovary, either this one or this one. And as it passes down the fallopian tube, it will become fertilized possibly by a sperm cell. Now the sperm don't know, the sperm are deposited here, and they don't know exactly where to go. They're swimming randomly all over the uterus, and the first one <clears throat> that gets there will um, fertilize the egg, and then the egg continues to pass down here. Now if you remember, we said it's the cilia, the ciliated cells, that are here that waft the egg along and it can implant anywhere on this uterus here. So assuming it implants here, it then divides into two, into four, into eight, into 16, 32, 64, 128, and very soon becomes a big ball a big mass of cells. Now that mass of cells begins to become specialized and differentiate. Some of it will become the baby, some of it will become the amniotic sac, and some of it will become the placenta and the umbilical cord. And as that continues to grow, it takes on a bigger shape and it becomes more obvious. So we have the placenta 
with the umbilical cord and then we have the baby and that's all growing inside the amniotic sac. So as we've got our baby developing in here, we've got the amniotic fluid that is made by the amniotic sac and it's there to protect the baby from bumps and knocks. Um, we've got the baby developing, we've got the placenta. Mum's blood comes along and is situated like this. Baby's blood comes along, comes down through the umbilical cord and has a large surface area in the placenta and goes back. So what we have here is diffusion of oxygen across to the fetus or the embryo. We have diffusion of carbon dioxide and other waste products back across this way to the mum's blood. So mum's blood and baby's blood do not mix. And again, that is why mum can have a different blood group from baby. It's weird and wonderful. It's weird and wonderful. It's weird and wonderful. It's weird and wonderful. Yes, the baby's blood and the mother's blood do not mix. They come very close together and oxygen diffuses from the mother's blood into the baby's blood and carbon dioxide diffuses from the baby's blood into the mother's blood, um, but they don't actually mix. And that's why mum can have a different blood group than her child. Now here's another view of a placenta. We never see this in TV programs when a lady gives birth to a baby. We never see the placenta. This is more what it looks like. And if you look at this next picture where it's been poetically arranged into a heart shape, we never normally see that. And if you think that's sick, have a look at these pills because it's now believed that the placenta has health benefits. So some people save their placenta get it made into pills and pop a pill for the following months. It's weird and wonderful. It's weird and wonderful. It's weird and wonderful. It's weird and wonderful. And what is weird and wonderful is that that one fertilised egg, that zygote knows how to, number one, make a baby but number two, also know how to make the placenta. It makes the umbilical cord. It makes the amniotic sac, which in turn makes the amniotic fluid. It's incredible that this one fertilised egg that you can't even see with the naked eye knows to just divide and, and make all these different things. And one of the things that you'll see in the photo now is the amniotic sac and how it makes the fluid that surrounds the baby and protects it from bumps, knocks, uneven pressure, changes in temperature so it can ensure a safe arrival. It's weird and wonderful. It's weird and wonderful. It's weird and wonderful. It's weird and wonderful.